Hi, I'm Dan with DJ2 Motorsports, and in this video we're going to talk about how control arms affect camber change. Hi, and welcome back to the videos. Uh, this video we're going to talk about how the control arms affect the camber change on the vehicle as the suspension travels. Now one of the easiest ways to think of the control arm is your control arm is basically the radius of a circle or an arc or a sector which is just a wedge piece section of a circle. So the inner pivot point on that control arm is the center of the arc and the outer ball joint where your spindle is mounted is going to be the, what creates the arc of that circle. So the shorter the radius, just going back to the math review, shorter the radius the tighter tighter the circle is or the tighter the arc is going to be and also the longer your radius arm is or your control arm is the more gentle of an arc you're going to have. Now your upper and lower control arms are each going to have their own arc that they produce but the one that affects the camera change the most is going to be the upper control arm just because it controls the top of the spindle at that ball joint. So that's why in off-road racing you'll see them using a lot of long control arms in their suspension because they need a lot of travel in their suspension to take the jumps and they can't afford to have a lot of camber change as that suspension travels up and down. Now to explain this a little better, I've got a little illustration here to show what the suspension does just on a generic setup, nothing specific, but it shows you the angle change of the spindle from the starting point through four inches of travel. And on our starting point here, just with the way we've got it set up, it's 6.57 degrees of angle change through that 4-inch suspension bump. Now in this next illustration, the only thing I did was change the length of the upper control arm by shortening it a little bit. And we still have the 4 inches of suspension travel. And as you can see, now we're at 7.87 degrees of angle change from where it was at the resting position. So shorter control arm, we have more camber gain through the suspension travel. Now in the last illustration here, what I did was I made the upper control arm a little bit longer than what we had in the initial setup, the first illustration that I showed you. And now you can see we're just a little over 5 degrees of angle change through that 4 inches suspension travel. So now that kind of shows you that the shorter control arm, you're going to have more angle change as your suspension moves. The longer the control arm, you're going to have less angle change as the suspension moves. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you leave comments, feedback, everything down below in the comment section. Also be sure to subscribe to our channel and also check us out on DJ2Motorsports.com where you can view our blog. We'll see you inside the next video.